Warning! This podcast contains... I don't know. Spoilers, I guess. A troll bridge? An actual troll bridge. That's not true. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the As Seen on TV podcast for Once Upon a Time, Season 7, Episode 1, Hyperion Heights. I'm your host, Dom, and joining me, we have Jake, Nikki, and Rachel. How's it going? It could be better. I, I, I would say <laughs> welcome back to Once Upon a Time, but I feel like we never left because we did, we did our rewind this summer, so we, yeah. we've just been going straight through. We, we did a look back at Season 2. And here we are now, coming in season seven, fresh, the uh, the quote unquote reboot uh, of the franchise, if you will. Not even, not even a reboot. It's that sequel that they do like years and years and years later. That's that, that's that's <laughs> yeah. why I gave the quotes in in quotation <laughs> fingers. Um, so I guess before we jump into it, first question is, what do you guys think? I liked it. I think it's because I, I mean. I've been to Seattle, so I know where all the, where they're showing all the stuff. I'm like, I've been there. I've seen so that. They, they're been... really recording in Seattle. Yes. Yeah. Okay. There's a, there is a real troll under the bridge. Okay. I really like it thing. because I think we after season one, people have always said, "Well, you're never going to do season one again," and I think they got close with season four, but and maybe that's just because you know all the parallels, but this feels like season one again. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Nikki. Um, <clears throat> um, I just felt like the, maybe it was paced a little bit too quickly. Like maybe they threw a little bit too much at us at one time, mm-hmm. but, uh, it does, it definitely does have the season one feel because it is a whole new place. You know, everybody, y- you're aware. The, the viewer is aware that of all who these characters are, basically. But to see them and basically curse one all over again, it's it, it's interesting. It really is. Yeah. I never thought I'd be like, oh, yeah, season one. I'm excited for that. But yeah. really well, good. it so, seems like this curse is a little different. It's like not the town is cursed, but the people. Yeah. Yeah, because so they can leave. F- for me, um, hear me out. Don't jump oh, down God. my throat, chat. All of it. I'll jump down his throat, chat. Here it comes. I watched it and didn't like it. I was like, "What is this? I I don't like it." I I proceeded to watch it two more times after that. It grew on me more and more every time I watched it, and I I ended up liking it by the end of it. I'm like, okay, and I think what it was is what Nikki said it's the pacing uh Mm -hmm. it just seemed like it was rapid fire too fast like the going from the way we told the the stories before we had longer times in the flashbacks the flashbacks seemed to be just really short bursts of just like here's this little thing and now we're gonna cut back immediately and then we'll cut back in and then we'll cut back and that just felt really weird to me I don't like that style. I don't feel like it's going to be used entirely through the whole season. I certainly hope it's not. But I did like the characters. I liked the story. I liked the setting. I liked everything about it, what it came down to, and what I realized after watching it three times. It was the pacing of which I did not enjoy. So, um, but yeah. I kind of liked it. But then again, I like fast fast pace. I'm like... Uh, if it gets if it's too slow, I'm like I don't want to watch this anymore. Yeah, <laughs> Alex says perhaps we needed a two hour premiere, and I think that would have honestly been yes, better. That yeah, would have been that's, that was actually one of my first thoughts was this should have been two hours long, um, just because it is you know it really is it is like season one again. We need the time with these characters. We we know the gist mm-hmm. of Henry, but mm-hmm. the other characters are new. Well, don't forget, guys. I wasn't the biggest fan of season one either. It did. I didn't get on board until it's halfway true. through the season. You know, so um, the chat's screaming at me right now. But I, I feel like that. I feel like this is going to be the same thing. It's going to take me a couple episodes to fully get on board with this. But I do like it. So you know, it's just uh, it's it's going to take a little growing to get into. I think I'm kind of doing the same thing for a lot of the series that we're picking up this this fall as we're starting. I'm kind of going in with low expectations. Um, 
the only reason why I picked up Once Upon a Time again this season was because they were basically rebooting and putting that in quotation marks because I wanted to see what they could do to not only re-engage me, but keep it true to the Once Upon a Time we started off with. Mm -hmm. So... See, I'm not the only one that watched it multiple times. Uh, Hannah in chat says I've watched it 15 times. Alex says I've watched it 17. So did any of you guys watch it more than one? Twice. I was six, so no. No. Jake, one, two, three. You're muted, You're muted Jake. Jake. I don't know why that happened. <laughs> I watched it once. Uh, to watch it, and then I watched it a second time so I can take notes. Um, so I guess the first time I was just like, ah, once my time is back. And then the second time, like, okay, calm down and, you know, try to figure out what everyone's saying and what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So getting getting into this. So right off the bat, we start off with what is technically considered a flashback at this point. Um, Henry leaving Storybrook. Right? He yep. says goodbye to Regina, and I'm sitting there through this whole scene going, where's Emma? Where are the Charmings? I know we're going to go back and cover that at some point. That's going to get covered. But what I mean by that is this is a big moment. Henry's leaving Storybrooke for good, and they're not even there to see him off. Like, I understand he probably had separate goodbyes with everybody, but you would think all his loved ones would come together to see him leave as one. You know, so something clearly happened there. I mm -hmm. think Emma's not around. You know, we, we, we're going to get her flashback. We're going to we're going to see that she's I believe next episode we're going to deal with that. So she may have already left Storybrooke at the point when Henry decides to leave. Um, so that doesn't explain the Charmings. I'm sure we'll get to that as well. I know they're going to be uh, in an episode coming up as well. So we'll get there. Um, but. Henry goes <clears> off to find his own story. He takes August's bike, his helmet, and pulls a magic bean out of his ass. Where did this magic bean come from? Nobody? No? Uh, I well, don't know. Maybe, maybe there was an untouched little bitty stock in the farmland that well, didn't there, get there burnt. There is. Okay, so we have established... I think well, we'll Regina did have a bean plant in her, in her true. office. They didn't but destroy it. But the, but the beans were stolen. Yeah, no, but it, yeah, the, plant the plant wasn't died. destroyed. No, I think the plant died. Because um, she doesn't have it. Well, we've seen her office and she doesn't have it anymore. At least it, at least it's not in the place where she where we saw and it. And say maybe she moved it. Ruby did know. say that episode where we finally found out what the fuck happened to Ruby. She's, she got a magic bean somehow. So I think the magic beans are... They're not extinct, they're just very, very, very difficult to grow now. Right. Well, we do know, because of season two, and we just covered season two, they did regrow them. Regina burnt them. Some survived. Like, she had the little stock, but that's not to say any more didn't survive somehow. So, yeah. you know, they never really went into it. But I'm, I'm hoping this is stuff that they do go back and explain. Um, I know Jared Gilmore, the actress who plays young Henry, or original Henry, um, is around for at least one more episode. Um, so... I don't see them not being able to bring them him back in if they want to tell more later. I think he would totally be on board with that. Um, but Henry explains how there's hundreds of other books uh, in the Sorcerer's Mansion. There's a French Snow White, an Italian Snow White, basically endless possibilities uh, of what can happen. So we go through the portal to what they're just calling a new realm. Uh, and it is, in fact, a different castle that we see. Uh, it is not the Cinderella one that we were talking about last uh, Rewind episode that we were talking about. It's not the Snow White Castle. It's in the same location. It's just a different castle. Like, it's still that long bridge to get there. The same mountains are around it. So, I think the structures are going to change, but the landscape is pretty much going to be the same. I almost feel like yeah. it's just like a cloned landscape of the Enchanted Forest with different buildings and, and locations. Um, so it says years later, undisclosed amount of years later, um, but I think it's somewhere around five, um, yeah, yeah I would say, yeah, um, uh, and this is when, 
uh, Henry's riding his motorcycle and rides Cinderella off the road. Um, How does he still have gas for the motorcycle? That is a good question, but he has Magic. been... Trans, yeah, ma magical gas. He's farting into the tank. I don't know. <laughs> Who is eating too many beans? Yes, too many magic beans powering, powering the gas tank. That's where all the magic beans went. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. God damn, Henry. So he kind of made his bike into a mini Jolly Roger. Yes, there we go. Yeah. Um, and... So he recognizes Cinderella from the stories immediately because he sees a glass slipper. How could you not realize that Cinderella? Um, well, you know, there could be other ladies who are stupid to wear glass slippers in yeah. the forest. But he calls her Cinderella and she's like, you know, how do you know me? He's like, oh, I know you from the story. She starts questioning that. And then they bring up one of the plot holes of Cinderella that we've discussed many times on this show. <laughs> Yeah, how many other people in the kingdom have the same foot size as me? You know, like, plot hole, mm -hmm. you know? Like, yeah. I'm so glad that they put, they brought that out, put that to our attention. Well, um, why did, yeah, which always kind of bothered me, like, why didn't they just look for the person who has the other slipper? I think that's... I mean, well, in one, one version, it, she does, when, yeah. when, the, when the stepmother trips the foot in... It breaks, and then she brings down the other glass slipper. Yeah. yeah. Why didn't the prince think to look for... Because he's a prince. He's there to be pretty, not to he's, think. He's not known for his brains. No. You don't know. See, he didn't get any screen time, so we don't know. He might have been, like, you know, a fucking genius. Yeah. I would, he, I like, would have, he, didn't, he didn't seem like it while he was getting stabbed that. in the back. I would have really laughed if they made some reference to him being Prince Charming, the way that Prince Charming and Cinderella are supposed to be together in the original Disney story, you know? Um, I would have loved that reference because we would have been like, wait, no, that's Snow and Char What? The Snow always had the unnamed prince in, in the movies. Actually, the one in Snow White, I mean, and Cinderella actually had a name that I can't remember. So. They all have names, no, yeah. but nobody cares. Except for uh, Sleeping Beauty, they did. They actually did say his name was Phil. Yeah. So. Um, I know the whole the, the whole gist of this particular Cinderella story is that you know she's she was supposed to go to the prince and then you know he was supposed to find her or whatever, or you know there was that that lapse in time where they had to find each other. Um, they weren't talking about this prince in the castle, guys. They were talking about Henry. Henry is technically a prince. He is the the son. Oh yeah, no, yeah. of. Of uh, grandson of Snow, so he's a prince. So he's the prince that they're meaning to tell the story about. Yeah, but no, no, I get that. I he's get not that. a prince of this realm, though. Right. Doesn't matter. He's a prince, which I, which I think would be interesting. I, I don't know. Th this is just me, you know, trying to figure out the politics of these realms. <laughs> oh, are you royalty? If, are you royalty if you're not from this realm? You know, even even Disney royalty for the princess uh, lineup is a little questionable. Like Pocahontas is not really a princess, and you know it's like, but she's part of the princess lineup, you know. And then that mm -hmm. if she qualifies, why doesn't Alice? Alice in the original telling, you know, became queen, you know, at one point, and it's like, but not in this version, you know. Yeah, just but Pocahontas mm -hmm. wasn't either, so. I you know. think if you're in a, I think if you're in a position of power, you could be considered a princess. Mm -hmm. That's just how I think the Disney princess lineup works, and it also depends on you know how much money your movie made. I guess <laughs> that's probably the main thing. Uh, but Alice is a cult classic after all. Um, so Henry teaches her how to ride the motorcycle, and he uh, she basically beats the crap out of him, and steals the motorcycle. <laughs> Just gives him a good old knockoff side of the head. This is now. I don't like this trope of I'm a badass because I punched a boy in the face. But this is how you do a smart, resourceful character the right way. She wanted Henry to teach her about the motorcycle. How does it work? How do you drive it? What does it do? So as soon as she got the information that she needed, she didn't need Henry anymore. Right. So, yeah, she she manipulated him and then uh, ditched him. 
is basically what it came down to. But not only did she steal the mic, uh, motorcycle, she stole his uh, dagger, his, his little pocket knife thing. Mm -hmm. um, and we see her go to the ball. Henry shows up at the ball. Who else is at the ball? Somehow, uh, uh, Tiana. Tiana. Tiana's at Tiana. the ball. Tiana. The frog legs. No. Damn writers. They fucking answered my prayers because I've been like campaigning for her to be in this goddamn show since season one, but she didn't do it. I don't know why. But well, like, with, and when they showed uh, her in the apartment, with her, I was like, who is that? Okay, she has to be someone. She's rooming with someone. <laughs> who's this fairy tale character? And then when we saw her in the ball, I'm like, oh, it's Tiana. Yeah. Okay. And we got fucking Merida before we got Tiana in this goddamn show. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm glad she's here now, though. I can calm down. Well, be glad I want, because... I want somebody else. Because somebody Tiana's going to be a more important character than mm -hmm. Merida was. She's going to be around a bit longer. Yes. Um, but, so, she goes to the ball. Henry shows up. And uh, she talks to him about how she has plans to kill the prince. Uh, apparently, he took everything from her. And by that, she means killed her uh her father her family yeah yeah but why we don't but know why? we don't know um henry Maybe tries to were... stop her but in the meantime passes out because he was drugged uh by alice i, I cannot i cannot express how much i dislike this Alice. Maybe it's just the yeah. actress, or... or maybe you know, she's associating herself with Rumpel, but... I, I even... I mean, I, that's fine, because it, it's it's a twist on her character, because, you know, every other time we see a naive, innocent Alice. Mm -hmm. This is different, but, like, I, I just can't get... Maybe maybe it is the actress that they chose. I mean, she, I, I'm sure she's amazing and everything, but just, it doesn't feel... She To me, she doesn't feel like an Alice. And that's what I like about it. She seems more like punk Alice than, you know, than uh, country she seems girl like Alice. It, she seems you like know. an Alice that's been, been through some shit and she's done putting up with shit. That's what she but, seems like. Well, she's like that Alice that's been through crap. Right, because don't forget, I these are so. supposed to be other variations of the tales that we know. So they're not supposed other, to be our Alice, you know. No, there are other versions, but essentially when you have other versions of different stories the situations are the same and character traits and like the the essence of the character is still there even if they might they might have different personalities mm -hmm. but there's still but there is one core part of their character that is always the same this alice doesn't have the one thing that makes alice alice and that's curiosity well not that there we know we don't know too much have, about her yet from what i've seen mm -hmm. this is not she doesn't like seem there's no like you know childlike wonder right. that Alice has even if she is a grown up Alice there's still the core there are versions of Alice who is a grown up where she still has that um like where she's interested in everything yet she's seen everything and that's unique to her character and i wish we could see more of that with this Alice oh we might you know we don't know we don't we didn't see very much of her Mm. It's just my first impression just was like, oh, this isn't an Alice for me. Like, this yeah. isn't my Alice. Well, the first impression we saw of her, she, like, dropped off from a roof. We didn't even see her in the flashbacks, but like, we'll, 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 co we'll cover present day in a, in a bit. We're, we're just sticking to the flashbacks, then we'll go to present day. But, um, I don't know. I I loved the, the thing when he goes, oh, you're Alice. Alice from Wonderland. And she goes, and other places. He says, she you was know, so pissed. She's one so trip bad. and that's all anyone ever remembers, you know? It's just like... Well, yeah, because all the other places are boring. Yeah. But, you know, I love the line to Henry, and she's like, be careful what you drink, you know? Because it's, it's still throwing back Wonderland kind of references and stuff, that, too. So really, yeah, Jake's right. The curiosity of Alice is gone. Um, and I don't know what core part of her personality is the same, but the core part of her character is still Wonderland. Like, that's, that's still involved in this Alice. Um, it would have been really interesting, though, if she was like, what's Wonderland? You know, that would have been more interesting. Well, no, then I, no, then I, that's just, no. No. We can't have that. <laughs> See, I would have preferred that if she went somewhere else that was very different, that was darker than Wonderland. That's you know? not a different version of the story. That is... It could be. That's just a different story. It could be. 
Well, if it's a different version of Alice in Wonderland, then you know it, you're still going to Wonderland. But if it's just a different, if you take Alice and you put her in somewhere else, that's just fan fiction. Well, you had her go through the Looking Glass. You had her go to other places. Well, like she said, then, she went other well, places. Look, well, the hand, be- the land behind the Looking Glass is the se- that's the sequel to the original Wonderland story. The land behind the Looking Glass is a different, is not Wonderland. I, right. I think a lot of it's people not. have a misconception about that. It is a different place. So maybe she is talking about the land behind the Looking Glass. Yeah. Yep. Um, but apparently she is working with Rumpelstiltskin. She said. Uh, Henry, your grandpa knows everyone. Don't you know that by now? He's looking out for you. Uh, and when it's your, when it's not your story, bad things happen. She's trying to steer him away from uh, Cinderella, and that all the more pushes Henry in that direction. Of course, hello. So, um, Henry wakes up, goes back to the ball. Um, but in the meantime, we had met um, through another separate flashback. We had met Lady Tremaine. Um, she apparently has Cinderella's fairy godmother. Uh, cut off her wings. Um, and uh, tells uh, Gisela uh, not to rely on magic. That fear is is something that lasts forever. Magic does not. But I like that. This one time we're going to use the wand and then bibbity bobbity booze the fairy into dust. The, the damn fairy godmother cannot catch a break. No, she can't. Yeah. She died in Gisella, our version, Gisella, she died in this version. She looked a little shocked when her mom bippy boppy booed her. Well, maybe her, mother, maybe her mother's never killed anyone before. Um, well, that too, I, but, then, but then again, I mean, this one, the way that she acts and knowing that who she is, she's a secretary and she's kind of a, a wimp, kind of almost want to say, but, um, but that's how the, 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 they really were when they weren't around their moms. They were they were carrying girls, but their moms made them that. Their mom made them that way. Their mom's mm-hmm. like, "You got to do it this way," or you know, yeah. kind of thing. So, so when Cinderella goes up to the prince now, and she goes to kill him, and makes it apparent to him that she's prepared to kill him, she why the fuck she backs out. She's like, "No, I can't do it," and he's like, "Oh, you you will not regret this." Like he, he's about to, you know, reward her in some way, shape, or form. Uh, until he gets stabbed through the back by Lady Tremaine. Yeah, she's like, you can't do my dirty work, sorry. She, yeah, yeah, I knew you were going to do it. She then announces yeah. to the whole ball that Cinderella assassinated the prince. Uh, her and Henry have to fight and flee. Uh, and this is when Henry says, you know, meet up at the wreckage of your carriage and I'm going to take you back to my realm. It's a place where uh, people get second chances all the time. Um, you know, and they fight their way out. So Henry goes there later, um, and uh, she doesn't show. But there's a slipper on the ground. So still in the Cinderella twist, something happened. She disappeared. Her slipper's there. The prince has to find her. You know, this is where, like Nikki said, this is Prince Henry now coming in to find Mm -hmm. Cinderella as Mm -hmm. opposed to Prince Charming or unnamed prince from whatever the Enchanted Forest called him. Um and uh because i think if i almost remember in season one they made a reference to that uh where they like called him something said he was charming and snow like we already have one of those or something like that Mm -hmm. you know so that was that was a nod but way back then too they swapped the names around you know and they know it and they're just making a joke um so henry decides not to go through the portal that opens up um and he says, Operation Glass Slipper is about to get, begin. So Henry's grown up and he still hasn't dropped these cheesy names for his operations, you know? Why are they even operations in the first place? Why doesn't he just decide that, like, huh, I'm going to do this, but I'm not going to, you know, label it anything because I'm a grown-ass fucking adult. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, well... I mean, to be fair, Operation, Operation Glass Slipper sounds way better than all his other operations. True. But it's That's still very stupid. true. I am not, I'm not disagreeing with you, Jake, but it's still way better than Operation Mongoose, Operation Cobra. Operation Mongoose is my actually my favorite operation. <laughs> because the, a mongoose is the only animal that can kill a cobra. Mm. Yeah. So, now my guess here is that um, Regina was opening this portal for Henry on the other side. Somebody opened it. It's not like we didn't see Henry throw the bean. So somebody else had to have opened it for him. 
um, and he was planning on coming back through. Uh, and when he didn't show, this is what sends Regina, Rumpel, and Hook looking for Henry. So I think this is what starts the catalyst of them getting out of Storybrook to get cursed. I think I think that's that's what happens here. I don't know. He had a timer, so I'm just guessing it might have been a random random portal. Well, we know we know that the family comes looking for him. Otherwise, they well, wouldn't yeah. have got cursed. So there had to be some reason for them to be concerned. And I it think might be. I think it's him not coming back through that portal. I think that's what that's sets five years, all these actions then in motion. How would he? How would he know that they opened the portal and he know exactly what time and where it's going to be? He had his watch set, so. Yeah, but how if they are trying to find him? How? If, yeah, I mean that doesn't make sense. Because if they're trying to find him, they have no contact with him. How are they going to contact him? And I mean, let him know where if we're, the if we're talking, open about, up? If, we're, if we're talking about the portal where he, initially he was supposed to come back or go back to wherever he came from, that was a planned portal. He had to be there at a certain time, just mm-hmm. like you know Cer- Cinderella leaving the ball at midnight or whatever. He had to be there to meet the portal to go through it. I'm thinking um, like um, I've seen other movies that are like that. Like okay, the, there's a portal here opening up at this time. Yep. And, that's, that's and exactly then another and then random portals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So now that we've spent a little time with adult Henry, what do you guys think of the actor? I like him. I like him. I like him. Yeah. It feels I, like uh, I sat there. I, the second time I watched this, I actually watched this with my mom because uh, she had just the week before she just finished season six. She finally caught up. Um, and we, uh, we went out to lunch, she came back, and she was just, uh, doing some stuff, and then I was like, oh, did you catch up on once? You want, you want to watch it? And she's like, yeah, yeah, I'll watch it. I was like, all right, cool. So we sat down, we watched it, and she's like, this guy is, like, the same mannerisms, the same everything as Henry. She, like, Mm -hmm. her jaw was on the floor. Like, I knew what to expect, because I've seen this other actor, I've seen him in The Walking Dead, um and stuff but uh yeah it, it's just it's unbelievable how how close he resembles henry not only in but appearance but in mannerisms of, he also kind of resembles hook am i the only one who notices that he, yeah you, you can see he, he he has taken on the scruff kind of look yeah he he does i can see but it they I, have like I the fa- they have like the same facial structure mm-hmm. it's the cheekbones and the jawbones are kind of in the same area, so it does make it look like that they they're kind of the same, but Yeah. So uh I don't know, you guys have anything else for the flashbacks before we get to present day? Um I would like to know um Okay, so we, we have there was obviously a big chunk of time that we had from, you know, we had young Henry going into this new realm and then, you know, he's grown up with his, you know, rusty ass motorcycle. I want to know what he's been doing this whole time. What other characters has he come in contact with if he has? And um, if he, um, let's say five years have gone by, what happened in our realm that made everybody else stop aging well we do know that henry is an author not the author but other people have heard of his book so whether or not it's the original storybrook uh fairy tale characters and like you know it's obviously his rendition of what happened when he decided to set out for emma like that was i think that's what the book's about about that whole story. Yeah, the book he wrote is seasons one through six and a little mm-hmm. bit after because it does the end couple chapters mention Cinderella. So we know he's been writing. So he's and and other like I said, other people are aware of his book because uh, Victor- Victoria Lady Tr- Lady Tremaine comes around. She's like, yeah, we'll stop. Ri- you know, you need to like get the hell out. Nobody wants your fairy tales. Yeah, and um, Cinderella said, you know, good luck with the second book. Yeah. You know, Lucy so, is holding the book. She comes there with it. So, yeah, this book's been around. Yeah. Book. So, I mean, that's one thing that he's been up to. 
But uh, I'm talking about what he was doing this entire time in this magical realm. Not oh, the- I'm. We have how many more episodes? We're going to find the hell out. <laughs> but it, <laughs> but this feels like. I don't think this it feels realm. Like this episode. It the, feels like this episode is like the first time he's come in like contact with like all these weird fantastical well, yes, things. Yes. And these significant characters. It's, it's, in what, this it's, realm, mind you. He's he, he's realm jumping. This is not the first realm he went to. Mm-hmm. He's he's gone to a bunch of different ones. Um and uh I believe that's something that Adam and Eddie even said in an interview uh before this even aired. Um so there is a good chance we're going to get flashbacks of other realms and stuff other than this current one with this this version of Cinderella and Alice and Lady Wasn't Tremaine. Wasn't there a panel at Comic-Con this year? Yeah, I believe that's probably where I heard it. To yeah. To be honest. Um I don't remember exactly. But yeah, he like he's been going other places and I honestly believe he's been back to Storybrooke um between this two. Like I think if that's the case, because he had to have had a plan, because we see at the very beginning, Regina's like, how are you going to get back? This is your only magic bean. He said that's going to be an adventure. And then it cuts away two years later. So I feel like he went in, he found beans, he's been traveling, he's been going to different realms. He went back to Storybrooke at some point, gave Regina a bean and said, or Hook or somebody a bean and said, you know, uh, I'm going to be at such and such place. Send this back. I don't know why he didn't take the the bean, but, you know, it's whatever. Um, And then they threw it down and expect him to be there. He's not there. That's why they come for him. Then they get sucked into a new curse. So, that's how I think all this went down. But, um, so we cut to present day, right? And we find out that Henry is a swift driver. (laughs) Which, I, I, I read a couple of reviews from some people on the internet... They're like, oh yeah, he's he's basically uh, an Uber driver in Seattle. I was like, more like Lyft. You no, know, like, it, like it's it's more of a pun on on Lyft than it is Uber. But I, yeah, I but, get no, I get but, Uber's more popular, so that's the one that they're 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 talking about. And I don't know, they just couldn't come up with you know a parody name for Uber. Yeah, probably. Oh, um, yeah. Nothing that didn't sound nasty. Yeah. I mean, it is. He's in Seattle. I mean, it could have been a. He could have been a super driver. Uh, just add S on the front of it. So Henry does still have uh, the Swan keychain. He's got Emma's keychain now. The one that his father gave to Emma. You know, and now it's passed down. So Henry. So I believe we're gonna see how Henry got that keychain. Uh, Next episode, when right. him and Henry, uh, she, uh, Emma she just gave it to him. Yeah, yeah. That, that's how he got it. Yeah, but under the circumstances, I mean, there, there you go. Um, so he's trying to write a new book, um, because, <laughs> like we said, he wrote his entire life story, and uh, and when, when Lucy comes to to see Henry, he says, you know, I didn't have Jiminy Cricket as my therapist. I didn't fly with Peter Pan. He starts listing off all these things. So everything that confirms, you know, everything that, like, Lucy's supposed to know about him has to be in the book. Because she mm-hmm. wouldn't know any other way. Um, so it's basically everything about his old life didn't happen in his head. So it proves he's cursed. False um, memories. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so she says she's from a town called Hyperion Heights, uh, which is a real town. Like we had mentioned, unlike Storybrooke, where the town was cursed, and everybody in it was cursed, but the town especially came out of nowhere, and you couldn't leave, and, and stuff like that. Some of the characteristics uh, characteristics of that seem to have carried over. Um, people can leave, but it seems like the town gives a little resistance to people that want to leave, but not complete... I mean, like, Henry's like car still did no. break down before they left the border of Hyperion Heights. I mean, it, it wasn't might not Henry's have... car, was it? Yeah, no. they sh- at the end. She did. She stole Henry's car to get away. That's where Henry's oh, car yeah, went. Yeah, yeah. She stole Henry's car. Yep, you're right. And it broke down because of the border of Hyperion Heights. 
So it's the same kind of thing that was happening with Storybrooke. They'd get to the end and then, you know, whatever transportation would just die on them. But so, you could still, I think you could still leave. You could still leave. I mean, but I feel like Jacinda, or Cinderella, didn't want to leave on foot. Right. She was going to take the ferry. Yeah, she was. She's going to take the ferry over to... So the way this, the way this curse works, it's kind of like that pop-up you get when you want, when you want to, you know, unfriend somebody on Facebook. Mm-hmm. You, you push the button that says unfriend, and then you push the button that says, yes, I really want to unfriend this person. Are you sure you want to unfriend this person? Yeah, yeah. that's basically yeah. yours. So, but then maybe you can't come back. The whole reason Henry even goes to the town in the first place is because Lucy, when she came to visit, um, she mentioned that Victoria Belfry is uh, buying out everyone in the town. She's mm-hmm. forcing them to separate, and they're going to lose each other forever. So... Henry wasn't buying any of it, so apparently when he wasn't paying attention, and I don't know how this is possible, because if a little kid was in my apartment that I claimed to not have known and actually felt like I didn't know, I wouldn't leave them unattended in my apartment so they could steal things. Um, but she stole his laptop and left a note and said where to come find it. Um, then we we go to, um, we cut to uh, Jacina, Jacinda, Jacinda, um, where... Uh, She's working at Mr. Cluck's Chicken Shack. Uh, would any anyone here care to tell me where Mr. Cluck's Chicken Shack originated from? It lost. There we go. Somebody's been paying attention. No, no I no. haven't. I just know because <laughs> you don't shut the fuck up about Lost. <laughs> right? I yeah, even I, I even had Alex message me in a private message uh, mm-hmm. on Facebook saying, I can't wait to see everybody's faces when they find out Mr. Cluck's Chicken Jack came from Lost. <laughs> so, he said, uh, he said, when I saw Cinderella's job, I was screaming. I thought it was really funny. So, yeah, it was, to me, that was one of the best most subtle um subtle. references yeah because it's not something that as a like a casual lost fan wouldn't recognize that kind of thing but that's that's where hurley there's no such thing as a casual lost that's that's fan. true i guess um that's where hurley worked that was his job uh and we have actually seen mr cluck's chicken shack previously on once upon a time uh mm-hmm. they went through the drive through i believe uh the road trip with rumple yep um and uh Daniel Day Kim, who played, uh, uh, oh, I can't remember his character off the top of my head, played, uh, Dan, no, Daniel? No, Daniel's the, the guy's name. Jin. Uh, he played Jin on Lost. He was the voice in the drive through speaker in that episode. So, thought it was cool here. So we had this, and we have Jacinda working there. She's got her boss, uh, Louie, who's a, a really big jerk, um, I'm curious, do you guys think Louie is a character from... I, I feel like he's a character from Tiana's story. Okay. Louis the alligator. <laughs> he's a or, butterfly. Or he's a monkey from the Jungle Book. I don't know. I, I feel like he is a character, but he's one of those, like, like he's kind of like Belle's dad, where he doesn't really matter, but he causes issues anyways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's a grumpy... He is. He is. Uh, would Would you say, Jake? Uh... Well, there are two, I guess, Lou characters in the Disney canon. There's Louis from Princess and the Frog. He's the alligator who plays the trumpet. Uh, or there's King Louis from The, the Jungle, Jungle Book. Book. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's. I don't think this guy is either of those people. We, we don't know. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure, but basically, she comes to work late, right? And then Louis yells at her, which that's her fault for coming in late. So Louis had a right to yell at her, but he also was a dick. So I'm not going to stick up for him. But, mm-hmm. you know, she's also in the wrong, too. For her to walk out of a job at that moment, I could see if she was doing everything right and she got yelled at, then that's a reason like, to walk out of. I feel like this this has had been yeah. a, like a buildup. It's so, been, like, it was even, just her last straw. Even her roommate, Sabine, who is Tiana, uh, Sabine even said, you know, that... Uh, um, he is a jerk, but you know we have to pay the rent somehow. So she's yeah. really not that happy. That... Maybe you could drive for Smith. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what? I want to say thank you 
Thank you once upon a time for not putting Tiana in the chicken shack. Mm. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then we also met uh, the real, real life, the real life counterpart of Alice um, when she jumped off the roof and uh, smiled. Who does she at think Henry. she is? Catwoman? Yeah. That's who she is. Oh my God. Still like Catwoman. <laughs> Uh, she does remind me of Selena Kyle from the Gotham on Fox mm-hmm. telling. She she reminds me a lot of her from that. Um, I just, like, you know, like, we were talking about Alice in the flashbacks, and you know how I said, like, I didn't like how she fit. And I didn't like this Alice ten times more. Like, like the Hyperion Heights Alice. Like, I when you see her face, I, I feel like she's a junkie. Just, she looks worn down. Yeah. Her character's and, name we did not get in this episode, but it's Tilly. Um, okay. So that that's her Hyperion Heights counterpart. Sounds like a junkie name to me. Hmm. I don't know. See, because I was thinking this whole time that Tilly was the one that stole the car. Mm-hmm. But. I, I swear, Jacinda's car is blue and Henry's is silver, so there's two different cars. And I don't think Jacinda stole Henry's car. I think she stole she took really her own car. Dress. I could have swore it was that they st- she stole um, Henry's I car. I don't think she did. I don't think she has. Yeah, she didn't have a car. Well, cause she came into the bar, Ronnie's bar. She could have She could have took Tiani, Tiani's, uh, Tiana's car. So yeah, she came into Tiana's the bar, <laughs> which was so Ronnie's leave room. Bar, which is Regina, um, and she came in there to drop the laptop off to Henry. At which point she leaves the bar. Shortly after, and then Henry's car goes missing. Yeah. So. And I know Hen- someone in chat said maybe Lady Tremaine took the car. No, Lady Tremaine wanted him the hell out. She wouldn't have taken his car. Yeah, yeah, she wanted him out, but she agreed to yeah. help with the car. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. for any information. That's when Henry gave up the, you know... I think that's why she, she stole it, to. because she she because she was missing, and she knew that he knew something. Mm. But I swear, her car was blue and his was silver. See, this is the same issue we have with Cinderella's dress, whether it's blue or it's silver, so... I don't is know, is the dress black and blue or, or white and gold? <laughs> no, see, we're, not, see, we're not doing that because... That's what uh, this actually, feels like to me. You know, there was there was something that uh, uh, off topic, but like there was a there's a scene in Princess and the Frog where Tiana is wearing a gold and white dress, and somebody redid that scene but recolored the dress black and blue. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. So, um. Yeah. So. Someone stole the car. Yes. <laughs> um, so, what did you guys think of Ronnie? Didn't get enough of her. I don't know why they have to give them separate names. I literally do not see the point because they already have too many names as, you know, as the fuck it is. Not really. No, like, I. See, we. It is going to get confusing when they do get their memories back and Henry's gonna be like, what the fuck do I call like, you? Yeah, I mean, he's just gonna call it, her mom, but see, I it's, mean... It's better if... It's better when you have a fairy tale name and a normal person name, but... Well, Regina's name in, Regina, in the Enchanted name. Forest was Regina. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like, but you but you just... And we've always called her... She was either the Evil Queen or Regina, but essentially her name was Regina, and that's what people knew her as, Regina. But now you just gave her another first name. Right, but other characters have had completely different names. Like in season two, we found out Belle's cursed name was Lacey. It was a completely different name. Or she never had that name. No, no, they confirmed it. They said that they gave her cursed memories to her. But they mm-hmm. called her Lacey for like two episodes, and like that right. Was it. No, and I understand I, that, but I'm saying her cursed never, self didn't, didn't have a different yeah, name. We didn't. She get never had. Those... We didn't get Lacey memories until. Yeah season two I and she He'd never been locked kept, up the whole time nobody she never kept her. those memories she never kept them here's the thing about all the other characters they kept their cursed memories and they kept their cursed names but it was okay because they were like normal 
you know, in this world that they're in now, it was normal for that realm to have those names. But now Regina has two names. I don't know. Like Archie didn't continue to go by Archie. He's Jiminy Cricket. So a lot of people I had mean, no one ever called like... him Jiminy. Ah. No one I, has I, ever called him Jiminy in a human form. I feel like you know it in was the, the choice of the characters, did. and the the characters chose like, "Hey, I want to be called by my storybook name or my story Brooke name, like you know my curse name." I feel like they had the choice, but like you know with uh, with Snow and and David, they they always kind of like switched around, like, "Oh, I'm charming today," but no, I'm 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 and David. Well, because they but... even they even questioned that to David. They said. You're David or you're charming. Which one do I call you? And he goes, No, I'm well, David. He's... I've always been David. But what, what were you? No, I was David then <sighs> too. Like, yeah. You know. Well, here's the thing. Charming is. He had a name before. He was charming. His name was never charming. His that is a nickname. And yeah. Name yeah. Is David. So that's his why. His name was always David. So that's I, why maybe I should have used Snow name. and Mary because you know they go back and forth a lot. That you know she's either Snow or she's Mary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like that's and a see, perfect that's example why, of two names when the character didn't have two names. It's two names, but then again, you know, when you know, when you have two normal, when you have a normal name like that, it's you know kind of difficult to like keep track of these fucking people. And it's like I don't know what the fuck I'm calling you. Um, it's easier to call Regina Regina. I'm not gonna call her Ronnie. Like you, can, whatever fucking name you give these characters, I'm not gonna call them that because that's. I will. Not... I will call her Ronnie until the curse is broken. Um, but here's the thing. I, I, I will call I her Ronnie. I will call her Ronnie if this theory turns out to be true. And it was Lewis, I think, who said that these are not the care. So, Rumple, Hook, and Regina are not in Hyperion Heights. This is not who we're seeing. These are actually different versions. Is this of her that. evil? Her evil queen? No, version? it's just no. It's just another 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 version of these characters. And that's well, that's that's incorrect because uh, I know it's a theory, but it's Adam and Eddie have already said that there are not multiple versions of Rumpelstiltskin, the Evil Queen, or Captain Hook in their Why telling. Not? That's just not what they're doing. I could, but I think that they could do that, but what? they're saying they have not done that, and they're not doing that for this season. That's not out of the question for later seasons. It's just not something they are doing this season. Yeah, but I mean, I'm just saying that, you know, since Regina, you know, pulled herself apart, you know, there's basically two Reginas, but there's the evil queen and well, then there's Regina. So I was like, is this one, is the Ronnie the evil queen or is Ronnie Regina? Well, the evil queen who eventually became Regina again, that one died. So there's just one. Yeah. Unless there's no, another. We don't know for sure. There's a still another. No one ever stays dead on this there's show. There's another wish realm somewhere you know out there where there's another regina that got banished somewhere it's fucking versions that we've, we've had all of these and they're still running around mm -hmm. there's like three or four different hooks somewhere i feel like they you know keeping regina as ronnie like them as the like their main characters keeping them as their original selves and so to speak makes sense it makes it easier on the audience mm -hmm. if we can just call them by their names. And I'm not going to, and like Ronnie is like, that's, that's the nickname I gave to Veronica on Riverdale. So like, yeah. Yeah. They're two different cars though. And he's just double checking. Can, can, can we stop with the damn cars? Sorry. Yeah. There's no indication for anybody to be talking about other cars right now. Um, but so we get to see um, Belfry Tower. This this to me is the new Mr. Gold's pawn shop. You know, it's not it's not the pawn shop per se. You know, there's nothing like the relics and all that are not here, but this is well, the new this is the new base of operations, you know, for okay. for the character in the know. Did anyone else get a devil where's Prada vibe from the like when when uh Gisela was Gisela Gisela? One Drizella. of the Gisela was like Okay, everybody, snap, snap, snap! You gotta do this. No eye contact. Oh, yeah. I got a devil's wear Prada. A devil wears Prada. I swear that's where that they got. Yeah, they got. That's how they got Tremaine's attitude from that movie. That's exactly what I thought. I was like, well, I've seen this before. <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally got the devil's wear Prada. Mm -hmm. 
and that just that also further solidifies that you know Tremaine has such a grip over her daughter. Hmm. I have a quick question. Where's the other one? Uh, I don't think there is another one. There is. Yes, there is. Oh, there is. Um, Anastasia, the other sister, uh, will be appearing. Uh, I forget. I didn't write it in my notes, but I had it on screen. Uh, episode nine. So we got a ways to go before we meet the new oh, Anastasia. Wow. She's got to make her way out of Wonderland or something. It's not that Anastasia. It's a different actress. (laughs) We still have hope. Fuck you once upon a time. (laughs) Quit crushing our dreams. Shh. Yep. Um, But no, I like, so we get her and then we get um, Lady Tremaine comes in with her um, and she demands to know where her granddaughter Lucy is. Um, she's missing. She yells at her assistant, which is her stepdaughter in flashback story, Brooklyn. She's, um, Ivy in this. And, uh... It's not her stepdaughter. It's her real daughter, I think. Oh, is it? Yep. Okay. Those are her real daughters, and Jacinda's her stepdaughter. Okay. Um, and she goes, the assistant is supposed to even be, uh, uh, Victoria's daughter. Um, because the assistant has the last name Ivy Belfry as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, nepotism much. Yeah. So you see the way she's still treating her own blood, you know, even <laughs> though she's her assistant. So she really is just in it on her own. But, well, uh, I think, I think the lady Tremaine always really genuinely loved her daughters. Yeah. It's like, it's like Cora and Regina. I think Cora generally loves, Regina. I think Lady Tremaine generally loves Drizella, but the way they go about it is all the wrong ways. Mm-hmm. But they do the things that they do because they think it's going to help themselves out while also helping their daughter out. And see, that's and that's that's the thing right there that it, they're not just looking out for their daughter; they're not putting like themselves on the line for their daughter. They're putting other people on the line for herself. And her daughter. They're basically she's lining people up so her daughter and her can step over on them to get to where they want to go. Yeah. Um, Human staircase. Yeah. Pretty much. So Lucy had run away. She was making uh, a wish in the well, and this is very reminiscent of the well that you know exists from uh, Storybrooke. You know, it's the is is this the well that returns lost things is this tied to their version of lake nostos like uh, no maybe well i always felt i always thought these these water these, these wishing wells or like these sources of water were always i think these were always connected to that um y'all remember in once one time wonderland that well of wonders yep. that the woman from the ring came out of i always thought like that was their own version of the well of wonders hmm could be because Lucy's making a get, wish on it. You get your wish. I think you get your wish, but there's also the twist to it. Mhm. Cuz Lucy makes a wish on it uh and her mom is expecting like instant results. She's like take give it give it time. Give it time. Uh but we find out Lucy's grandmother Victoria is going to demolish Sorry, that's my cat. He's mad that I won't go upstairs. He's going to demolish uh, the place for condos. Uh, apparently, it used to be a garden. Mm-hmm. So, um, this is when uh, uh, Henry confronts Lucy and is like, Did you, uh, or shortly after, this is when Henry confronts Lucy. He's like, My car's missing. Did you have anything to do with that? <laughs> yeah, because I stole He's like, car. Dude, I can't reach the pedals. <laughs> yeah. Right? She's so sassy. She like, is. Like even when she was uh, at first, when she was, when she first went to go get Henry, she read the first line that he was writing for his book, and she's like, "Yeah, okay." Like she said something sassy to him then too. Like she, she she's totally like, Henry. Yep. Mm-hmm. And her mother. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. She's both of them rolled into one. Um, and, the, and this is when Henry uh, said he was sorry but he's not the one that can save her. He did have a family. He lost them. Wife and a kid, they died in a fire. 
Um, and she's like, no, these are your, your cursed memories. And Henry's like, maybe they're he not, they're did. real, and he leaves. Well, it'd be interesting. So it's easy to say, yeah, those are your cursed memories. But what if that actually did happen? And what if Henry, <laughs> in this life, actually did have another wife and child, and they did tragically die? Mm-hmm. <laughs> She stubbed her toe, just to let you know. <laughs> that was hilarious. Okay. <laughs> so Jacinda takes Lucy and her car breaks down. Um right in front of the Bainbridge Island ferry. This is when uh Officer Rogers, aka Captain Hook, uh tracks them down for Victoria. Ha, huh, his name is Rogers. <laughs> Thought, yeah, I didn't that catch really that funny. the first time I watched it. So, and then Dom's like, well, yo, he's well, Officer Rogers. Yeah, like, so he's wait, Officer what? Rogers. He was promoted this episode to Detective Rogers, and it's only a matter of time before he goes from Detective Rogers to Captain Rogers. If they do not promote him to Police Captain, I'm going to be very, very upset. That They're is not a missed opportunity. It. No, they're not going to do it. He's going to get fired, like, right when he's there. He's like, ah, oh, no. He's working with Weaver, Rumpelstiltskin, Mr. Gold. He's not going to get very far because he's going to get fucking stabbed in the back. I hope well, we find out oh, that no. Weaver's last name is Gold because that would be fantastic. Well, no, that would be stupid. Um, <laughs> I don't like that. I want to know, oh, what I'm curious is if uh, all these people have cursed memories. Why doesn't Lucy? Um, I feel like Lucy was born in Hyperion Heights rather than born. She wasn't, though. No, she oh. wasn't. Bo- she was born in. I, I don't know. There her, was a protection spell season. over her. There's very possible, like, you know, we. Well, who's Lucy's fairy godmother? Something, I don't know. Something from last season, uh, when. If you guys remember in the. Uh, the enchanted forest type scene with Lucy in it. Um, and there was dialogue that said, uh, there was a curse coming and everybody's going to forget who they were. And this book is going to be the only thing. And it was the book that we remember. It was not the the book that Henry wrote. So Mm -hmm. I feel she has another book lying around, but the reason why she wasn't flashing that one around in Henry's face, the one that Henry wrote is because the one Henry wrote, is what he personally wrote, and these things actually happened to him. Yeah. So she's using that to try to be like, no, this is real. So there's something going on with that that, that we'll, we'll definitely get information on, but um, mm-hmm. I think the book, the same way the book helped Henry to believe, I think uh, it's, it's what made Lucy believe. I don't think she has memories of herself in, the, the, in her version of The Enchanted Forest, but I think she realizes everything that were in the books are true, and then Henry wrote about them, and that's how she found Henry. It, it's either uh, that, or she got a protection spell put on her before the curse hit. Could be. Like, maybe, maybe it was Tiger Lily, I think people are saying in chat that that's her fairy godmother. Or um, maybe it was the book but itself. Did Tiger Lily ever get off of She's still for as long as for as much as we don't know, we don't know where she's at since one since um either way um, I feel I that feel place like... Neverland disappeared or whatnot. Um because that's where she was it's at. It's still there. It's still there. Well it's that's nice. where she was at. That's where she went to exile after she failed being well, uh Rumpel's fairy godmother. She put herself there. Right, yeah. but then in Final <laughs> Battle Part One and Two when we saw in the flashback, um she shows up to uh lucy and um so it, lucy's worried about her father tiger lily tells her that the fairies have seen the future and know her family will be reunited however when the girl asks if they will be okay tiger lily backpedals and tells her the future is unclear and she cannot promise they will be okay but hashtag shady tiger lily but she can promise they will see each other again she then directs the girl to find her mother so so she's not her fairy godmother. She's just maybe she is. She's helping. 
Well, maybe so, so you that know, sounds like a fairy godmother thing to do. A uh, fairy godmother would be a or little maybe, more helpful than that. Maybe it was <laughs> no. It's so like well, I think she's just she's just Cinderella. helping the family. She's a family friend, and she's just helping. Well, I guess so. Well, you know who else is a family friend? Blue, but where is she? I don't know. We don't know where she is. Yeah. But, you know, Tiger really did regain her magic, so I think it's safe mm-hmm. to believe that she is Lucy's, but, you know, there is the possibility she's not, but... Well, I, we need a fucking fairy godmother for, you know, go, if Cinderella is one of our fucking... They friends. all die! Like, Why do you want this? Well, <laughs> they all what, die! You know, oh, Cinderella's fairy godmother dies? Like, see, that's, that's your fate, I'm sorry. If any, any version of Cinderella out there, if you are her fairy godmother, you are gonna die. Maybe. I'm sure there's at least one version out there where she doesn't die. But uh, but then it's revealed to Lucy that Henry is the one that told uh, Victoria about uh, the island. And she's like, no, Henry would never betray me. And she's <laughs> like, you, Ivy goes, you got to stop getting these delusions out of your head. She pulls open her backpack, rips out Henry's Once Upon a Time book, and hands it to Officer Rogers uh, and tells him to get rid of it. Um... We later see, uh, after he was promoted to detective, we later see Detective Rogers uh, flipping through the storybook story book, and uh, landing on a page that has Emma on it. Oh my god. And he's feeling like something's feeling. missing. So, feeling. you know, there's definitely something up with that. So the book, even though it's not the same magical book, the book is still serving its purpose. It's putting hope slash doubt in people. You know, yeah, that little inkling that, like, wait a minute, so old in the back of the head, going, hey, wait a minute, <laughs> like, I know this person, or either that or this person's really cute. Who the fuck drew this? Um, who's the model for this? Hashtag um, shady blue, hashtag shady Alice, hashtag shady tiger lily. They're all well, I think tiger lily is less shady than blue buzz, um, but um, yeah, shady, shady out, Al- shady oh. Alex, yeah, that is. Lewis, did you put that? Yeah, hashtag shady Alex. I will. I will agree with that. <laughs> um, so, uh, Ronnie decides not to sell her bar to Victoria. Apparently, at midnight, the bar was was getting sold, and Henry even commented, "What? At, what is that? Midnight? Your bar turns into a pumpkin?" <laughs> I was like, "Oh, here we go. More Cinderella references." I do like that he walked. My first thing he said when walked in. And they're like, he's like, well, what if I walked into this bar and told you that I was your son? Oh, yeah, I had a nice chuckle at that. <laughs> She's like, that would be a little... That would be a little yeah. weird, yeah. Sounds like a setup for a joke. <laughs> the two unicycles roll into a bar, and the bartender says, sorry, we don't serve your kind here. Unicycles ask him why. He says, you guys can't handle bars. I made that one up. Uh, <laughs> I think he's done. But while we see while we see this with with Ronnie not selling it to Victoria, she's doing this nice little voiceover about you know uh, hope and uh, inspiration and different things like that. We see Jacinda reluctantly goes back to Mister Clux and and works there again uh, when she gets out of work. She makes a wish in the fountain, um, and flowers start growing back at the same point. Henry is also able to start working on the second book. He's able to get past the first line. He starts it with Once Upon a Time, you know? So we're, we're, we're moving along there. But we see Henry go to 10th uh, and Oak to with flowers, and he's looking for a cemetery. Um, there's a parking lot there, and he has a passerby on the street, um, if there, if this parking lot was always there, and she's like, yeah, as far as I can remember. So, it goes to show Henry now, his memories of what we're to believe are where his wife and daughter is supposed to be buried are false. Because yep. when he goes to the grave, uh, the gravesite to visit them, it's not there. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, I don't know. The uh, that's pretty much the gist of everything that happened, um, and I really liked it. I like Weaver as a character. I think he's way more interesting than Mister Gold was. Why is his name Weaver though? He's a spindle weaver. 
No, but when when but he spins Stronicle, he doesn't weave it. So wouldn't yeah. it be called spinner? Spinner. Spinner's not He's a, a name. fidget spinner. Either is Weaver. Come on. Weaver is a name. I've known a few Weavers. Isn't Weaver like some sort of brand for hot dogs or like chicken strips or something? Yes. Weaver chicken tenders. Yeah. Okay. But well, it's peach. also a name. Okay. I went to school with a Weaver. I did too. Did they make you nice blankets? In our home night class. <laughs> um, I feel like we were... Out of the three... Nickname. Out of the three uh, original characters, which one did you like the best? Did you like Ronnie, uh, Detective Rogers, or uh, Weaver the best? Um, definitely Ronnie. Because she's more true to Regina than the other two are. Very much so. She's very much true to how Regina is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas, like, Detective Rogers... Haha, uh-huh, Rogers. Um, he's, very... he's very, like, laid back and just, like... He's almost the opposite of Hook, because Hook before, he was just <laughs> like... Well, I'm they gonna... did call him Boy Scout the yeah, whole entire exactly. time. Like, so he's the goody two-shoes, and... Dude, even when at the end of season six, he was not a goody two shoes. It's Come like they, they, they took him and went the total opposite way with him. And it's kind of funny because you're it's like, funny. This it's funny, it's hilarious, it's so entertaining. Weird. But I mean, I think the whole appeal of Hook's character was that he was a scruffy pirate mm-hmm. and he did bad things to get what he wanted, kind of well, thing. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's Captain Hook. So. And, and Weaver, he's, I mean, He's obviously a detective. He's one of those detectives that do whatever he has to do to get what he wants. Yeah. Yeah. So he's also we don't know. he's also pretty true to what Mister Gold was. Mm-hmm. I mean, we didn't see too much of him, so no. it's hard to say. But what we did I don't, see, I don't, I don't feel adult. like Mister Gold until later in the series would go out of his way and like around someone to get information yeah. I know he was, at one point because he was he, playing the part up during season one he had to act like the curse wasn't broken but people mm-hmm. still feared him you saw the kind of stuff yeah. he did to you know the uh, the nuns he owned everything yeah so uh, as but soon as it was broken he was a lot more ruthless because he got to be himself instead of having to play a part so I feel like Weaver is, is uh, the closest to, to Rumple the, out of um out of the, the characters. Uh, but I, I Ronnie, I think, is a close second. For me, anyway. Um, and I agree, Hook is probably the least, like, himself. Like, yeah. And Hook Hook does have a glove on his... Uh, yeah, I noticed that. I'm wondering, is, is that just an aesthetic choice? or? I think no, it's just a, He doesn't it's have a, a hand. Yeah. He didn't, he didn't get throwback. cursed and hey, grow a hand. Wait a minute. He ha- well, he, it was a glove on a hand. But the hand never moved. Yeah, when he did. It? Mm. Uh, yeah, when he, he grabbed the book with it. He had it, and yeah, it moved. I just I, think I, it was I wasn't paying attention during the book scene. I was only paying attention to it while in the police department, and he well, never moved his fingers once. So what happens when they get their memories back, or the curse is lifted? Does his hand just hand? poof and into well, a hook? Okay, you do need to remember that hook... Hook's hand still exists. Rumple right. has it. Rumple had it, yeah. That's true. And you can reattach it. Except it has a mind of its own. No, yeah. that was all psychological. No, Rumple did something to Rumple it. Rumple cursed it. Rumple did something to it, yeah. I don't know. We'll see what happens. With, with his hand. Yeah. Uh, so out of the new characters... Uh, I'm going to say with the exception of Cinderella, because she's she's the main uh, of the new characters, but of the, the new kind of like minor supporting Tiana. characters. Tiana. Okay. Um, I want to say Tiana too, but I also kind of want to lean towards Drusilla. Not because, you know, she's... Just because she is an... I, she's... She seems underwhelming right now just because she's under her mom's thumb. Um, I, I saw in chat somebody calling Drusilla a villain. She's not. She's not. She, she's just 
she's basically a minion right now. Mm-hmm. If right she now. gets that that inch to grow and become more of a character, and she probably will take on the side of the good side, because mm-hmm. there's definitely way more benefits there. But um, I feel like she has a lot of emotion to uh, to hook onto. She seems very innocent and very. She just wants to please her mom. She just wants to her mom. She wants her mom to love her. She just wants her mom to love her. Yeah, or anybody to love her, really. Mm-hmm. I think yeah, she's really not love. a villain. Well, yeah. I don't know because I think she could. It'd be interesting if she was, if she does go full on villain. Like maybe her mom dies and like she takes up the role. Some people in chat have made the comparison. Of this Lady Tremaine and this Drizella, and this Drizella, like this whole Cinderella version of the story that we saw in this episode, to Cinderella three. And for those of you who haven't seen Cinderella three, it, it exists. Yep. And it's actually pretty good. Um, can can we please uh, take that in for a second? That sentence, Cinderella three, is actually pretty good. I've so never seen Cinderella. It. In Cinderella 3, uh, the the Lady Tremaine gets a hold of the fairy godmother's wand, and she turns back time to go back to the first movie and make it so Anastasia fits the slipper and not Cinderella. And in that movie, we Anastasia, they go into more of Anastasia's character and we see that Anastasia was actually the better of the two sisters and she wasn't actually evil, but Lady Tremaine and Drizella were really the evil ones. Yeah. Because in Cinderella 2, Anastasia falls, falls in love with the baker. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I remember number two then because that's definitely the one I've seen. Yes. Um, for favorite character, um, depends. Uh, I don't know. Um, I Lady Tremaine, I like her character because she's so evil and you want to punch her in the face because she is so evil. So that's a good thing. It makes you hate her. And she's a very um, good contrast to what we dealt with as the mm-hmm. main villain, like Regina in the first couple seasons, you know, like. Magic. Yeah, it's it's the yeah. complete opposite. It's it's um, more more mind than it is magic. Yeah. Like she um, said, you don't need magic, you need fear. Fear. And um really interesting to have a villain who like doesn't rely on their powers. But I really like this Alice cuz this Alice just seems like she, you know, I know you don't you don't like her because of the, you know, she lost her wonderment, but maybe that's what she did. She lost it because she's been through so much shit. Maybe she has been through all, you know, different places and She's just been put, and she lost that. Maybe she has to find it again. We don't know. And I just like that. I like that version of her. It's a different version. I think. I think yeah. it's a good. Play. It could go someplace really cool. Because it adds I mean, more it's... mystery to the character. So out of all the new ones, Alice is actually my favorite. Um, so, um, I don't know. I want to see. I definitely want to see more. Um, I want to see why she's so angry about only being known for Wonderland. So, in other words, I want to see what happens to her in some of these other lands hates, that she goes to. Like, everyone hates Wonderland. Like, the Hatter hates Wonderland. Rumpel hates Wonderland. I don't know why everyone's all up in a tizzy about it. Mm. Well, yeah. we know that Alice has been working for Rumpel for a while. So, like, I want to know how that came to be. She's like an informant. Which might be part of why she's not so naive and curious and, yeah. you know, childlike we'll, anymore. We will 100% be getting flashbacks with Rumpel and Alice. That that oh, has definitely. to be a thing. You know? like There's a lot of things that we're going to be seeing this yeah. season. Yeah. I, I just hope that they don't rush it. No, I don't either. Because this first episode, like you said, it did feel very rushed. Um, mm-hmm. I'm hoping the pace slows down a little bit coming off this episode. Um, I do agree. I think it was Alex who said this should have been a two-hour premiere. I 100% agree. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would have given us a little more time to get to know these characters. Because you got to remember, too, like coming into this the show, knowing every character and having the time and spending all the time with all these characters, and then getting thrown into a, a, a episode where you vaguely know four of the characters and everybody else is brand new. It's it's a little overwhelming. So I feel like we probably could have done without Alice, maybe, this episode. The, the thing is, though, going into season one, even though the pace was slower, they managed to throw more characters at us in season the episode, the first episode in season one. Whereas 
they cut down the characters, but they sped up the pace, and I feel like we didn't get enough information, yeah. even though there was less characters. See, I, I, the Alice in Hyperion Heights, or, or Tilly, I would have still liked to see her, but I would have liked to sit on it for a few episodes and be like, who is that, you know? Even though I knew it was Alice from, uh, you know, interviews and, and things like that ahead of time. But still, like, as a, a viewer, if I didn't have that knowledge, I would have liked to sit on it going, who is that character? And just see her around a little bit and then get the uh, um, the backstory of how she, you know, uh, drugged Henry and tried to stop from meeting uh, Cinderella and all that. That's that's how I would have preferred the, uh, the Alice introduction. But um, I did go back. I did look. Uh, Hook never once moves his his hand it's stiff the whole time in the police station he does use the stiff hand it's it's in a more open position the whole time like from a fake hand which you would expect to be like this the hand is in a more open position like this and he rests the book's spine in that hand and he uses the other his real hand to do it and he grabs the book from ivy with his uh clean hand uh his real hand uh, the whole time. So, yeah, I don't believe Hook has his his hand back. Well, if he doesn't have his hand back, I want them to like give the cursed reason about why he doesn't have it. Yeah, yeah, I think it's just like a wooden hand right now. Like that's what they're trying to make us believe. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. So next episode is called "A Pirate's Life." Henry is reunited with Emma. Hook and Regina after facing trouble in the new Enchanted Forest. And in Hyperion Heights, Jacinda fights Victoria to see Lucy. Uh, so when Henry finds himself in trouble, he calls upon his Storybrooke family for help, and together they set off on a mission to find Cinderella. Along the way, Hook is confronted by an unexpected foe who threatens the group's success. In Hyperion Heights, Jacinda searches for a way to see Lucy, with some unwelcome assistance from Henry, while Victoria Belfry enlists the help of Gold and Weaver. Of Gold and Weaver? To push yeah. Henry out of the neighborhood? What? I, I feel like they, they, instead of Gold and Weaver, they meant Rogers and Weaver. Maybe. Um, they might have butchered their own. Because they are a partnership now. Yeah. It feels like that was a mistype. They might have butchered their, butchered their own synopsis. Mm-hmm. Or they're two separate people. Uh, that is that is a possibility. I'm gonna check uh, another source to see if that same typo there's is in there. Another, there's just a person named. Yeah, uh, three separate sources list uh, it, the help of Gold and Weaver. T- so yeah, I, th- I believe that's supposed to be Rogers. You done fucked it up. If that is the case. Mm-hmm. Unless Gold is a new character that we don't know. Maybe because it's not Mr. Gold, or maybe he is. He maybe in this version of the story, he again he still doesn't have cursed memories. He's just playing up the act, and he actually is Mr. Gold and has taken on this persona of Mr. Weaver. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck Rumble does these days. It could be, but I really hope he's actually cursed this time. Because we've never seen a cursed Rumble, right? No, no we really haven't. He never had fake memories, so. Calling him Weaver as opposed to anybody else would make the most sense, you know. But that, that that's interesting to and see. Hook never did either, was, actually. Uh, no. no, he didn't. But it's interesting to see if if Rumble did have cursed memories. Where did this curse come from, and who was who has that power to cast it? If it was Lady Tremaine, then she used magic, obviously. But if yep. she, if we go by this, like her motto of hers, where she didn't feel like she had to use magic, then who casted it? Well, maybe she stroke fear well, into someone to cast it. We we see she's not above using magic. We no, learned she's that not this above episode. It. Uh, it's not her go-to, but she's not above using it. So um, I feel like she could have. Um, but it's too obvious that it would be her curse. So I I'm curious. Uh, I'm curious where the curse came from, if not for her or Rumples. Maybe I maybe feel Anastasia. Like... Yeah, maybe, but I, I almost feel like, you know, Gold saw, like Alice said, Gold sees everything. Rumpelstiltskin sees everything. So maybe he saw what was going to happen, and he realized the only way to save Henry was to put a curse on all of these people again. 
But is it a dark curse? And if so, what did you sacrifice to cast it? Maybe he had Anastasia? to sacrifice baby his mode. Own, his own identity. Maybe Anastasia. Because Anastasia is only listed as the actress Anastasia. She doesn't at currently have a curse name to go with it. So as far as we know, Anastasia only exists in flashbacks currently. But to be that fair, may not to be, be the fair case. though, Anastasia is not coming till eight episode eight or nine. They usually don't reveal a lot of their their information until a few weeks before that particular episode Unless comes out. That... Especially if it's in the middle. Unless that isn't a big reveal and there's something else going on. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that could be the reveal of of how the curse was cast. Uh, you know, at least that much. And we find out that Lady Tremaine cast it and used Anastasia's heart to do it. See, that'd be interesting. Like, how far are you willing to go? Yeah. yeah. You know, because if she has to love someone, it's going to be her daughters. Um, because she killed the prince because the prince's younger brother turned down Drizella or something along those lines. Well, it would be interesting if she, so, so how, the dark, how, how, the dark, like how the dark curse works is that you need to sacrifice the thing that you love most. She loves but herself if, the most, to be honest. Yeah, but like she would need to sacrifice herself then for the curse to work. But if she sacrificed Anastasia, that means she loves Anastasia the most. And then we would have this, and then we have Drizella, who clearly now knows that she has she was Drizella Unless she was unaware of the curse. Oh, I don't know. Well, I'm just saying it, it can create an interesting dynamic between Drizella and Lady Tremaine if the case was she sacrificed Anastasia because she loves Anastasia better than Drizella. Yeah. Yeah, no, but Lewis is, is said, are they going to be able to wrap Emma's story up in just one episode? I think they can, but it's like they're not going to be done referencing Emma. So no. they're going to wrap her story up among multiple episodes but wrapping up with just her on screen i think they can pull it off in one episode um, and she's not in, and she she's not against coming back and making appearances so yeah and she's already a saint all of them have stated that though they're not they're not against coming back and making appearances yeah jennifer morrison who plays emma is the only one who has stood out and said i'm done i'm not coming back you know she out of um Love for the show, and Adam and Eddie and all the cast and everything, she doesn't want to leave the show high and dry, so she did say one episode she's willing to come back for to end her story. Uh, all the other actors, on the other hand, were not given a choice. They, they yeah. had to leave, but, but they're still welcome back to film other stuff. So they're just it, not it, main it, cast it, members it, anymore. Just, yeah, like, it, just, like, just like Rose and... Uh, David Anders, even though it's a whole new reboot, they have stated they are willing to come back if they if there's a room, if there's room for them. Yep. And yep. this is them still doing iZombie. So like, you know. It, yeah. I mean, with 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 the reboot like this, it's very less likely that we're going to see uh, Doctor Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. Not out of the question because it does technically exist in another realm, and we are traveling realms. Um, mm -hmm. We're more there likely, other... I think, to see Tinkerbell, because we know fairies can traverse realms. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, so we are well, in another... both of them oh. in both sides. <laughs> we are getting another episode with Belle, just one. Yeah. Emily Draven is coming back, and Rebecca Mater Three. was originally. Yeah, Rebecca Mater originally was. Um, I thought she wasn't supposed a... to come back. She wasn't supposed to. Yeah. And that was not her choice to leave the show, which personally I think was a mistake. Because mm -hmm. um, I love her on the show, and like all the cast and like all the crew has said that we love Rebecca Mater, we love having her on set. That's why they keep bringing her back. And apparently, she is coming back in a bigger way. Uh, she's got not not really a series regular, but like um, you know, a recurring character. So she is coming back. We don't know my capacity if it's going to be in flashbacks or if she's going to be here in current day. We don't know. She's but... supposed to have a three episode arc. Yep. So. Um, and I believe someone else is coming back, but I forgot who it was. Shit, I should have wrote this down. The Charmings? I don't think, no, it wasn't them. It was somebody else. I can't think of it right now. I'll, like, I'll probably remember it like at 3 a.m. this morning. 
I'm how trying it goes. to remember. I know that. Yeah, I know there's another person too, and I I can't think of them. Alex would probably I, know. Yeah, I don't think any of them would mind coming back if they needed to. Hey, you know, hey, we well, need. Well, Henry too. Hey, yeah. Hey, can you come back? We need a flashback, or hey, we need one little thing. Couple. You need. We have this easy, little piece. You know, for for flashbacks and stuff, it's so easy to just be like, "Are you can, are you available this weekend? If not, maybe this we weekend." Get like, you in a costume and throw you in a forest somewhere. It, it, like yeah, hours. it's it's oh, it's simple. It's Gideon. Oh, yeah. Gideon, right? Yeah, Gideon is gonna uh, come in uh, in episode four. So. Uh, you know what? And I'm because kinda... time has passed, I believe he's going to be the adult Gideon. Yes, it's adult Gideon. Big mouth. And I've... I don't know what it is about the name Gideon, but I've come to dislike it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what is he like? Did he... I mean, if it's going to be an adult, because realistically, yeah. between, you know, when the baby was born and maybe, what, between five and ten years have passed, so the kid's not that old. No, I feel so. like it's the Gideon that came to story Oh, yeah, I know, but then how did he, where did he go to, to age fast? Weird, timey, slimy stuff, I don't know. They never explained that damn realm that he came from, or how it works. Maybe we'll, maybe we will finally figure out what that is. Yeah. But also, a new new characters are coming, so we are getting more of this new Alice, more Tiana. Um, like we said, Anastasia is coming back. We're also getting a new version of Rapunzel, which yep. thank God, because yep. the other version of Rapunzel that we got in the show was there for like 30 seconds. And I feel like they could have done could a have, lot with that Rapunzel, though. You could have literally called that character anything else, but... Yeah. You, they could have, but they gave, didn't. Gave her the name Rapunzel, but literally Rapunzel, the character, had nothing to do with that story. So honestly, to me, Rapunzel was never in this show. They're mm-hmm. going with the bleach blonde Rapunzel this yeah, time, right? Yes. Uh huh. But yep. we don't know if that's going to be like based off, you know, the Disney Rapunzel or like the German Rapunzel. We don't know. Yeah. Uh, Lewis says, uh, "Will you guys miss Emma and nope. AKA Jennifer on the show?" Yes. No. Uh, I need to I am, start next I'll, I need, I will, I'll miss Tara and Hook together. That's all. Yes, I'll miss. exactly. That's what we need. And don't you dare, don't you fucking dare. Uh, Tara, Hook, out of somebody. all of the cast that are leaving, I think the only one that I'm truly upset to not have as a main cast is Zelina. Yeah. I mean, she is coming back, you know, more times than Emma is. She's yeah. still not a main character, though. And, like, I miss her as. A series regular. I'm missing her in every episode. Yeah. Because she's just so she's fun. I, I I'm not I'm not sad to see Emma go. I'm not happy to see Emma go. I'm very much indifferent to it, but I think and we learned this lesson from the Vampire Diaries. Um the final two seasons of the Vampire Diaries lost their lead one of their lead characters. Uh mm-hmm. the show completely changed and in my opinion changed for the better um, it was for the better for in in least. terms of writing there there was a lot right. of stuff that they did and got away with that they would not have been able to do if that character had stayed on the show mm-hmm. um so the fact that this jennifer morrison said you know i'm out made them think to change up the format of the show a little bit i'm not saying that this wouldn't have happened this whole hyperion heights and everything wouldn't have happened if emma uh, had stayed because I could totally see them writing her into it, um, mm-hmm. but it gives more of an excuse to do it and to try bolder things. Um, from what I understand, is this whole arc of Hyperion Heights and a whole new storybook kind of feel to it um, has been in the works since season four or five, so it's not something that they just threw together over the announcement of Jennifer leaving. This is something that they had planned um, for a bit. So, but yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I, I definitely like to see, because it's not. I'm not saying kill Emma. That's not. And Nikki would have no, different no, no. thoughts. But no, don't kill her. But like... I no no. I'm saying I've always liked the idea of a main character dying, um, 
at some point during a show or a movie or something like that. Because it's almost, it never happens, because it's what's been referred to recently as plot armor. You know, then you're like, oh, that character's never going to die. And then you put them in situations and their life is in danger and you don't feel any real threat because they're the main character. Uh, so I would like to see something like that. I'm not saying to kill Emma off, but I do like the fact that you're swapping her out and you're making somebody else the main character. Because then some other thing, you know, unexpected things could happen, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, here's the thing. I know. I know. People are like saying, "Oh, we, we need to wrap up Emma's story. It's not going to be done in one episode." But like it, it going on, for me, if they completely leave Emma out, season seven, I, I still feel like her story from season six, the way it ended, was satisfactory for me. It was. Not, it's just not satisfactory toward why Hook is in this exactly, new realm without her. But, that is see, that's the that's the whole different side of it. Like because the story they were done, they were together, they're, they're married, and then they carry him on into this this new season. There is that gap where like what the hell happened? That yeah. has to that be is tied up. that is the only reason why I'm like yeah. we need more Emma, you know. And I, I agree. I, mean, I agree. I don't think even if they say you know they want to wrap her story up, it's never going to truly be wrapped up. She, I mean, she's Henry's mom for heaven's sakes, and she's Hook's mm-hmm. wife. And you know, it, yeah. it could be that she's not there for this season, but season eight, if we have one, who knows? Well, no one knows. Well, Jennifer Morrison's not really too keen on coming back, she wants to distance herself from Disney in general. Um, yeah, we'll see about but, that. <laughs> but that's not to say she won't come back for an episode. You know, if, flashback. If, yeah. Can I remind it's people unlikely, but that, possible. Can I remind people that Henry has an uncle? He does. Where is he? He also has He has two uncles. Yeah, Gideon. Gideon's mm-hmm. his uncle. Yeah, well he has so he has Gideon, he has Neil and Neil. where the fuck is um baby Robin? Robin's coming mm-hmm. back with Selena. Yeah, so like baby Robin is she all grown up now? What and I yes. fucking, I still fucking hate your name, Robin. I hate your name. The fact that you're named after somebody else. Stop doing this shit. <laughs> I swear to God, if Lucy is named after like somebody's dead grandmother, I'm gonna fucking you know slit my wrist. <laughs> She's named after a Peanuts character. Sorry, a Peanuts character. Oh, well, I'd be fine with that actually. I hope Lucy has a piano. No, 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 a football. Just football. <laughs> she has a collection of footballs that she takes from all the neighborhood children. Yes. All right, so I think that's about it, guys. Um, I'm going to wrap this up here. Jake, where can the people find you? You can find me and all of my giggles and gore and monsters and mayhem here on YouTube at Jacob Salazar. Or you can find me on Twitter, tweeting me throughout the, throughout the life at Tino Orland. That is C-O-N-O-W-A-T-R-E-L-E-N-D. Join the No Orland Society. Excellent. Nikki, where can the people find you? On Twitter at LadyVenom24, L-A-D-Y-V-E-N-O-M-24. Excellent. Rachel, where can the people find you? Find me at Twitter at VikingWitch76 and on Twitch at VikingWitch, which I probably might stream Friday, but Ooh. we'll see how I feel. Yeah. I've been kind of sick the last couple of days. So. And you can find us all and more on Facebook, Gmail, G+, <clears throat> Twitter, Space, <coughs> and right here on YouTube at slash ASO TV Podcast for some more podcasts for some of your favorite TV shows, games, and movies. Thank you guys, every single last one of you in chat. There are way too many people to name. I'm so sorry. Um, mm-hmm. thank you, you know guys who you all. Are. Yeah, you guys know who you are. We we shouted out a lot of you guys as as it went on. Um, hope to see you guys again next week. And until then. <laughs> no. <laughs>